Welcome to Exploring Bible Characters, where today we'll be taking a look into the life of Josiah, Israel's good king. My name is Leslie Carroll, and it's my privilege to facilitate our study as we ask God to lead us into looking into His Word through the lens of its people. And if you'd like to know any more information about this study or any of our studies, you can find information on LifeWay.com. Let's start with a question to think about. To what degree do previous generations impact our own? Well, the story of Josiah is a testimony to God's ability to work in and through the lives of people who acknowledge Him as the one true God, even though their parents and grandparents did not. Josiah's life is set before us as an example of the dynamic impact that the choice to follow God can make. Josiah was born in 648 BC to a young 16-year-old named Amon, son of Manasseh, king of Judah. Well, Amon was not only young, but he was also wicked, and he died eight years later after only reigning two years as king. His son Josiah became king at the age of eight years old, and the land was saturated with, with uh, influences of idolatry, and yet Josiah stands out as one who chose to follow the Lord and his word and to seek the Lord just like David had done, to follow the Lord and his word fully, regardless of what others did. And actually, in the scriptural account of the life of Josiah, we do see that there were others that also chose to follow the Lord, even though society in that time was following its own influences. You know, we can learn many lessons from the life, the times, and the choices of Josiah. Lessons that will serve us today in much a time like his. Let's think about that as we go through our study today. Our key verse can be found in Kings, uh, 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25, and it reads as follows. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, in accordance with the law of Moses. Well, what are some basic facts about Josiah? He was the grandson of Manasseh, the son of King Amon and Jedidah, and he became Judah's 15th king. The name Josiah actually means Yahweh. Our Lord is my healing or support. He became king of Judah at the age of eight when his father was assassinated after only reigning for two years as king. He had a spiritual experience of renewal at the age of 16, and he led radical reforms throughout the nation of Judah. He reigned for 31 years until his death in Megiddo in 609 BC. In, the, in 2 Chronicles 34 and 35, we, we see five details of the aspects of Josiah's reforms. First, Josiah removed the apostasy of his father and his grandfather, his father Amon and his grandfather Manasseh. Second, he instigated the repair of the temple in Jerusalem, which was undertaken by the Levites. Third, during the repair of the temple, Hilkiah, the priest, found a copy of the Torah scroll. And upon hearing the Torah scroll read, Josiah responded humbly and penitently, tearing his clothes as a sign of mourning because he recognized the importance of the document and he sent it to Huldah, the prophetess, to be authenticated. And he knew the words of what the document was saying. And Huldah delivered a twofold message. One, an oracle of punishment on Jerusalem and Judah based on the curses for disobedience that are found in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And she also delivered an oracle of salvation for Josiah, based on his humility before God's word, Josiah would die in peace in a sense that he would not see, his eyes would not see the disaster that God was going to bring on Jerusalem and Judah because of their disobedience. Fourth, after the Torah scroll discovery, Josiah led the people in covenant renewal. He imposed a pledge of obedience on the assembly 
but the people, however, didn't share his personal faith, which is borne out by the sad fact that Josiah's religious reforms died when he died. And fifth, Josiah's reforms culminated in the Passover celebration. The Passover unified Israel, the king, the priests, the Levites, and all the people together celebrated the meal and reclaimed their history and the foundations of Israel as a community. Well, let's take a closer look at each one of these. First, Josiah's reforms, which we find in 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verses 1 through 8. And they read as follows. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. In his twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Asherah poles, and idols. Under his direction, the altars of the Baals were torn down. He cut them to pieces, the incense altars that were above them, and smashed the Asherah poles and the idols. These he broke to pieces and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars. And so he purged Judah and Jerusalem in the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali. And in the ruins around them, he tore down the altars and the Asherah poles, and he crushed the idols to powder and cut to pieces all the incense altars throughout Israel. Then he went back to Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of Josiah's reign, to purify the land and the temple, he sent Shaphan, son of Azaliah, and Maasiah, the ruler of the city, with Joha, son of Joahaz, the recorder, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. Josiah grew up with a father and a grandfather who did not follow God, although his grandfather Manasseh did eventually repent and led spiritual reforms that were supposed to draw the people back to God. But in the eighth year of his reign at age 16, while Josiah was still young and probably had not undertaken any of his public duties, he was probably under the control and direction of the regent, but in matters of his personal religion, he displayed personal piety. He was probably influenced by the prophet Zephaniah and also by the prophet Jeremiah, whose ministries were strong during this time. When he was 21, he began active reforms in Judah and Jerusalem, which he purged of high places, Asherah poles, carved idols, and images. The priest who burned sacrifices to Baal had their own bones burned on those same altars. According to 2 Kings 23, verse 16, even the bones of the priest who had died were removed from their graves and burned. These reforming activities were carried all the way north to, Man to the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon, and as far as Naphtali. Because you see, all of the military struggles were that were going on in the north at that time gave Josiah a wonderful opportunity to, to move into the north, into Israel, the northern kingdom, even as far as Upper Galilee, which was Naphtali. The passage of Scripture shows us several very important things. First, Yes, Josiah was very young, but he had a spiritual maturity and a depth about him that his father and his grandfather did not have. He was convicted that the right thing to do was to follow God and worship Him only. His list of reforms were long and extensive, but sin was so commonplace that it took a lot of reforms to move away from all of the pagan worship and the idols and the places of worship that his father and his grandfather had instituted in that land. Josiah broke the cycle of unbelief in his family. And you know, family members can still do that today. God is still in the business of changing families and nations and cultures. And he's in the business of changing us. Oh, let's keep our eyes on the Lord and see what he has for us in the lesson today. Now, let's take a look, let's continue reading in 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verses 14 through 21. We're going to read about finding the book 
of the law. Second Chronicles chapters four, 34 verses 14 through 21. And they read as follows. While they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. And he gave it to Shaphan. Then Shaphan took the book to the king and reported to him, Your officials doing everything that has been committed to them. They have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the supervisors and the workers. Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to, to Hilkiah, Ahikam son of Shaphan, Abdon son of Micah, Shaphan the secretary, and Isaiah the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the remnant in Israel and Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because those who have gone before us have not kept the word of the Lord. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written in the book. In the process of cleaning and repairing the temple, Hilkiah the priest found a copy of the book of the law. It may have been hidden by a priest to keep it from being destroyed during the times of those evil kings like Ammon and Manasseh. Or maybe it was removed when the Ark of the, of the, it was removed from the Holy of Holies by one of those kings, those evil kings. And many believe the scroll contained the entire Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, while others believed that it was a copy of Deuteronomy. Hilkiah gave the scroll to Shaphan, who took it immediately to King Josiah. And his first action was to send his most trusted men to inquire of the Lord for him and for those in Israel and Judah. He wanted to know what the Lord would say at this time in the life of the nation. Josiah knew the absolute necessity of obeying the word of God, and he was seeking to do that with all of his heart. The men went to Huldah, a prophetess who lived in the section of Jerusalem on the west side, probably built by Hezekiah during his time. Huldah faithfully spoke the message that God had for Josiah and for the people of the land. Let's read her message in 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 15 through 20. And I'll turn to that and we'll read from 2 Kings 22, verses 15 through 20. And they read as follows. She said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people, according to everything written in the book of the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all the idols their hands have made. My anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard, because your heart was responsive, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they would become a curse and be laid waste. And because you tore your robes and wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place. So they took her answer back to the king. Huldah was probably a member of the royal court. Her faithful prophecy concerns God, confirms God's word. Idolatry brings judgment. Huldah's husband, Shalom, has the same name as Jeremiah's uncle. So the two might have been one and the same. The message was clear to the people of Judah because they had forsaken the Lord and followed other gods, little g. The Lord's wrath was already kindled against them and it would certainly come upon them and not be quenched. God warned them and now he fulfilled his word. Judah would become a desolation and a curse. And the message to Josiah was also a fulfillment of God's word. Josiah had a tender heart 
sensitive to what the Lord said. And when he heard the word, he immediately humbled himself before the Lord. He wept and he cried out to the Lord in prayer. Because of that, Josiah would die in peace without seeing all of the desolation that the Lord was going to bring upon Judah and its inhabitants. Well, let's read about Josiah's renewal of the covenant in 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 1 through 3. And they read as follows. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and degrees with all his heart and with all his soul, thus confirming the words the Lord had written, the covenant written in this book. Then all of the people pledged themselves to the covenant. What do you see about the place of the word of God in Josiah's thoughts and actions? The first thing Josiah did was to call together the elders in Judah and Jerusalem to a meeting at the temple. And the people of Judah and Jerusalem went along with him. The priests and the prophets were there as well, which probably included Zephaniah, Jeremiah, and possibly Habakkuk and Nahum. And Josiah had little to say. He simply began reading the words of the Book of the Covenant which could have included all those first five books of the law. He made a personal covenant to follow the Lord and his word, and the people followed his lead, and they entered into that covenant. The word of God made an impact not only on Josiah, but under his leadership on the nation as well. Now let's read about Josiah celebrating the Passover in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 35, verses 1 through 7 and 6 through 19. And they read as follows. Josiah celebrated the Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem, and the Passover lamb was slaughtered on the 14th day of the first month. He appointed the priests to their duties and encouraged them in the service of the Lord's temple. He said to the Levites who instructed all of Israel and had been consecrated to the Lord, put the sacred ark in the temple that Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, built. It's not to be carried about on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves by families and your divisions according to the instructions written by David, king of Israel, and by his son Solomon. Stand in the holy place with a group of Levites for each subdivision of the families of your fellow Israelites, the lay people. Slaughter the Passover lambs, consecrate yourselves, and prepare the lambs for your fellow Israelites, doing what the Lord commanded through Moses. Josiah provided for all the lay people who were there a total of 30,000 lambs and goats for the Passover offerings, and also 3,000 cattle, all from the king's own possessions. And then in verses 16 through 19, so at that time, the entire service of the Lord was carried out for the celebration of the Passover and the offering of burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord as King Josiah had ordered. The Israelites who were present celebrated the Passover at that time and observed the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. The Passover had not been observed like this in Israel since the days of the prophet Samuel. And none of the kings of Israel had ever celebrated such a Passover as did Josiah, with the priests, the Levites, and all Judah and Israel who were there with the people of Jerusalem. This Passover was celebrated in the 18th year of Josiah's reign. So in his 18th year as king, Josiah reinstituted the celebration of the Passover. And evidently, the Passover had not been observed to the magnitude that Josiah ordered it celebrated since the days of the prophet Samuel. King Josiah and his workers worked diligently, his officials, to make the Passover an important event again and one in which the people remembered the past and celebrated God's goodness to them. 
The Passover celebration was one of Israel's most important celebrations, a commemoration of a significant event of God's deliverance of the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. God, at that time, God's angel passed over the doorpost of the Israelites where they had put blood on their do doorpost as commanded by the Lord God. But when the angel passed by a house that where the blood was not on the doorpost, that angel stopped and the firstborn in that house died as commanded by the Lord. But before the Passover could be observed by the people, the, le the leaders of the people had to prepare for this celebration. They needed to be encouraged by King Josiah to serve in the Lord's temple once again and to remember. They needed a morale boost because the tone that they set in the temple at this time would, would de determine the tone of the entire Passover celebration. King Josiah encouraged them to return to God's word and to make preparations according to the instructions that were given by Moses and by King David. And you know, I thought about us as we come together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, a time of celebration, to remember what the Lord Jesus has done for us. We should prepare. We should be uplifted. We should take time to remember just like they were doing in Josiah's time when they reinstituted the Passover celebration, an important celebration and time of remembrance in the life of the Israelite nation. King Josiah and his officials took the lead in providing for the Passover celebration. Did you hear what the scripture told us? Josiah reached deep into his own pockets and he provided a total of 30,000 sheep and goats for the Passover. In addition, he provided 3,000 cattle, all from his own possessions, and his officials joined in by providing generously. Scripture says that they gave generously, providing voluntarily much of what was needed for the people and for the Levites, the religious leaders who would be overseeing the celebration itself. King Josiah is an example of a king who broke with family tradition. He became king at age eight, and in time he broke with his family's tradition of rebelling against God by leading the nation back to God, removing detestable places of worship that worship false and foreign gods, little g's, and returning the heart of the people back to God through things like this very elaborate and meaningful worship centered around the Passover. But now let's read about his death in 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verses 20 through 25, and they read as follows. After all this, when Josiah had set the temple in order, Necho, king of Egypt, went up to fight Archimish on the Euphrates, and Josiah marched out to meet him in battle. But Necho sent messengers to him, messengers to him saying, What quarrel is there, king of Judah, between you and me? It's not you I'm attacking at this time, but the house with which I am at war. God has told me to hurry, so stop opposing God, who is with me, or he will destroy you. Josiah, however, would not turn away from him, but disguised himself to engage him in battle. He would not listen to what Necho had said at God's command, but he went to fight him on the plain of Megiddo. Archers shot King Josiah, and he told his officers, Take me away, I'm badly wounded. So they took him out of his chi chariot and put him in his other chariot and brought him to Jerusalem where he died. He was buried in the tombs of his ancestors, and all of Judah and Jerusalem mourned for him. Jeremiah composed laments for Josiah, and to this day all the male and female singers commemorate Josiah in these laments. They became a tradition in Israel and are written in the laments. Well, in 609 B.C., Pharaoh Necho II traveled northward to help the Assyrian forces as they fought against the Babylonians. And Josiah attempted to prevent Necho from traveling through his territory at Megiddo for some reason. Necho warned Josiah that he was following God's orders and that God himself might destroy Josiah if he interfered. But Josiah didn't heed Necho's warnings. And in fact, Josiah died in that battle. My Bible had an interesting footnote 
about King Josiah's death as follows. King Josiah began well but ended his life in disobedience. Some suggest that his untimely death was immediate retribution for sin. The circumstances of his death are given, but without clear explanation. Necho, king of Egypt, was responsible for the sudden death of this faithful king. Even Josiah was not exempt from punishment for disobedience. Well, but Josiah did leave a legacy. He removed all the traces of foreign worship from the land and consolidated Hebrew worship to Jerusalem. However, not even his sweeping reforms could cool Yahweh's wrath over Manasseh's outrageous reign. Judah fell to the Babylonians in 586 BC, and most of the Jewish leadership was taken to Babylon in exile. Josiah's godliness could preserve neither him from his premature death nor his nation from the upcoming exile. But the biblical writer remembered Josiah as Judah's greatest king. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25. Before him there was no king like him, who turned to the Lord with all of his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, according to the law of Moses, and no one like him arose after him. That's our key verse for today. Let's be encouraged by Josiah's example of the dynamic impact that the choice to follow God can make. Let's learn lessons from his life, times, and choices to help us be faithful and obedient. Let's, too, turn to the Lord today and love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, as Jesus commanded in Mark 12, verse 30. I hope you've enjoyed looking into the life of Josiah, Israel's good king, and perhaps you've learned some things I know I have. I'd love to hear from you. There'll be a contact slide that will come up shortly. I'd love to hear from you. Any insights, comments, questions that you might have, let me hear from you. And um, I will tell you this concludes our six-week series on the kings. And next time, we're going to be starting a new series on the prophets. And I hope you'll join me next time when we'll be looking into the life of Elijah, the bold prophet. So until then, God bless you and keep you.